Welcome to Kuwait's Industrial Automation and Control Systems Cybersecurity Conference, KIAX Cybersecurity 2014, 25 through 26 May 2014. Hosted and organized by Equate Petrochemical Company in partnership with KPC. Salam alaikum. It's a pleasure to be here and to be uh, part of a conference that is uh, so well organized and so exciting and so important. Um, we've just heard about uh, Shamoon. We just saw that in the video. We just, uh, we all know about Stuxnet and how that was a, a malware that was designed to attack the Iranian nuclear uh, uranium enrichment facilities and the Tans. These are all well-known stories. Um, in fact, they're perhaps too well-known because they've given the opportunity to the whole world of bad guys to say, wait a second, what is this thing called industrial automation and control systems? What, what have we been missing? We've been going after banks. We've been going after your desktop. But now there's a whole new area. So things like Shamoon, things like Stuxnet, have started to educate the bad guys and started to um, bring attention to an area we don't really want attention. But Shamoon and Stuxnet and the other ones we've heard about recently are certainly not the first ones. And in fact, I'm going to tell you a, about one that probably most of you don't know that was a direct attack against an oil company um, a, almost over a decade ago now. Um, it was directly intended for political purposes and it was uh, designed to destroy the control systems. Now, in the winter of 2002, uh, Venezuela was in the middle of a general strike. It was the largest, most severe general strike that had ever been seen in Latin America, in the entire history of South America. Uh, it started in December 2nd, 2002. It ran till February 2nd, 2003. And the strike paralyzed the country. Uh, it paralyzed the oil industry in Venezuela. Uh, there were work stoppages, there were sabotage. Uh, in fact, in the words of Ale Rodriguez, who was the president of, uh, and head of uh, Petroleos de Venezuela, or uh, PDVSA, as it's commonly known, um, he stated, we've suffered many acts of sabotage at the terminals, at the refiners, even at some of the wellheads in Lake Maracaibo. There have been instances of computer hacking which did a lot of damage since much of the operation is centrally controlled by computers. Now when I read that in uh, Oil Daily, I was surprised. I thought, what, is, what does he mean by centrally controlled by computers? He's not really saying computers, he's saying the industrial control systems, the SCADA systems. Have those been hacked? Well, there's nothing much was said after that. It was very quiet. That was the only record, was that one comment. Um, because I guess, you know, oil companies don't like to publish information about attacks on their control systems. That makes sense. It's not something you want to make public. But I was uh, very fortunate. In 2004, I was working on a project uh, with a number of PDVSA engineers, and I was able to interview engineers that were who involved in defending against that attack. And what I learned was interesting. What had happened is strikers were able to remotely access the uh, SCADA system and control system at a tanker loading um, facility uh, at a marine terminal in eastern Venezuela. And they were able to get inside that system remotely. They didn't have to go into the plant. They were able to connect through a uh, remote support network. And once they were in, they were able to get to the PLCs. This company used um, PLCs for their ship loading. Um, and they uh, hackers then went in and they erased the programs in all the PLCs. Now, as soon as you do that, that's it. You're no longer loading ships. They managed to down the facility for eight hours before um, they were able to be detected and removed um, and the programs reloaded. And uh, within eight hours, uh, that facility was up and running. Now, PDVSA were very, very lucky because the attackers weren't sophisticated. The attackers hadn't had the opportunity to see attacks like Stuxnet and Shamoon and see how it's done. They were beginners. 
Um, so they made a lot of mistakes. They were easy to detect. It was easy to spot what they were doing. And they didn't go after the backup systems as well. So there were still backups of the programs that could be reloaded. So PDVSA was very lucky. But today it would be different. Today, as you will learn over the next two days um, at this conference, as you will hear the expert speakers talk about it, now the attackers have a lot of tools. They are much more sophisticated. They have used lessons learned from Stuxnet, lessons learned from attacks on the US uh, power grid, from attacks on the US um, oil and gas, in particular the US gas pipelines. They've taken lessons from this. They've gone to conferences and they're smarter and they know what they're doing and they've got the tools. They know about vulnerabilities that completely destroy a PLC, not just disable it for an hour or two. Uh, thanks to things like Stuxnet and the reverse engineering of Stuxnet, the hackers out there uh, have learned techniques to keep their software and their attacks very, very stealthy. And thanks to the internet, you can become an expert on oil operations very, very quickly. You can be an expert on a particular DCS or PLC um, by getting the manuals, downloading them, reading them, taking online courses. So what we have here is a perfect storm. We have much, much more knowledgeable, much better trained attackers. They're not like the ones attacking PDVSA in 2003. They have a lot of tools at their disposal. There's more connectivity to the outside world. There's more ways in. We've interconnected our systems. We're no longer using technologies like uh, LCN, proprietary technologies, or data highway. Now it's all uh, Ethernet and um, TCP IP and Windows in our control systems. Uh, everybody has, a, uh, has an iPhone. Everybody has wireless. So the technologies have all been come in common. Okay? And we've got much, much more dependent systems. Uh, our systems are being run harder. They're being run faster. We're demanding more than they're running on the edge. So in the words of US Vice Admiral Mike McConnell, we are a nation with a strategic vulnerability. Now when Vice Admiral McConnell said that, he was of course talking about the US. But it doesn't make any difference. He could have been talking about Kuwait just as easily. Because just like the US, Kuwait has the same control systems. It's the same hardware. It's the same processes. It's many of the same enemies or adversaries. Kuwait's faced with the same challenges in oil production as the US. So Kuwait and all the countries in the Gulf area are faced with the exact same problem. We've now got a strategic vulnerability. And it's a serious vulnerability because cyber weapons are not like conventional weapons. Uh, or maybe they are. Maybe they are a little too like um, things like uh, IEDs and improvised um, explosive devices because they're an asymmetric weapon. If you're familiar with asymmetric warfare, the idea is it's a small group with a political agenda, can do a lot of damage to a large, well-organized group, uh, very effectively using very limited resources. And cyber attacks are perfect for that. You don't need to have millions and millions of dollars to organize a cyber attack, but they can do millions of damage. We've seen the tragedies and the, and the problems that asymmetric warfare does when it's conventional warfare, and we're talking about IEDs. But with cyber, the opportunities for the attacker are even greater, and the challenges we face defending them are even greater. And cyber attacks have some other advantages over IEDs for the attacker. Because unlike bombs, they're really hard to, they don't leave traces. They're really hard to detect. They're really, really hard to trace back. And so that gives you plausible deniability if you're an attacker. If you're a nation state that wants to sponsor an attack on, it, on a, another country, you don't have to leave pieces around lay, pointing out that you did the attack. You can be very subtle, making it very, very hard to prove. And the other thing about cyber attacks is they're focused. And they allow you to focus on what would really, really hurt a country. Okay. 
destroy what's really important to the economy of that country. And for Kuwait, I'd have to say it's oil. Um, in America, there's a few other things that it can be. In Canada, it's a few other things. But in Kuwait, oil is really important. And so if I was a attacker, if I was a terrorist, if I was working for a foreign agency that was wanting to cause harm to Kuwait and the Gulf countries, I would be doing it by attacking the physical equipment that produces oil. I'd be doing things unlike what PDVSA experienced where it was recoverable, I'd be focusing on trying to use the control system to destroy equipment that was hard, to expense, hard and expensive to replace. And I'm sure the attackers are thinking, thinking the exact same thing. This is the focus they want to have. Now, if I were to rank nations in terms of cyber offensive capabilities, um, and let's start with nations because Stuxnet came from a nation state. Uh, a lot of the attacks come out of the government. But let's talk about nations first. I think it's the Russians, the US, and the UK that really are leading in the development of cyber offensive weapons. Um, China, you read about a lot in the paper. Um, I think they're a little less capable, but they make up for it in mass. They do it by the, uh, the quantity, if not the quality. And there's also some surprising players in the last few years that are starting to get into the top five. One of them is Iran. Um, we see attacks in, uh, towards North America from Iran that are very, very uh, determined and sophisticated. Now in North America, uh, one of the main drivers of our economy is our large financial institutions. And two years ago, Iran started a massive denial of service attack against our, one of our critical infrastructures, the top 10 banks. Um, they went after the top 10 U.S. banks with this denial of service attack right at the time that the intensive negotiations were going on around the, the Iranian nuclear um, program. Um, the banks themselves uh, spent on average uh, $400 million each to defend themselves. That was $4 billion in defensive actions to protect those den against those denial of service attacks. Now, in this case, the attacker made a mistake. Um, they actually went after the wrong target. They went after the top 10 banks, and they could afford $400 million each. Had they gone after secondary targets, smaller banks, those banks would have failed. They would have not been able to afford the defensive. They would have not been prepared. Um, and they would have uh, cost the US economy heavily for the failure of those banks. And this brings another point up that I think is really important to note. We think the attacker uh, will go after the biggest and the best, but sometimes that's not the right thing to be protecting or just the only thing to be protecting. We have to make sure that the entire system is protected. The attacker will look for the weakest link in the chain. In the US banking system, it would have been the mid-sized banks. And so the same applies as we start to look at protecting the control systems and the automation systems in our oil and gas industry, in the chemical industry, in the Middle East. It's very, very important that we look at not just the biggest, but also the entire system and all its integrated parts, because control systems are integrated, they are interconnected, and make sure that we're protecting the whole system. Otherwise, the whole system is, can be at jeopardy because of a single problem. Now, this is expensive. I saw when I was flying in yesterday uh, that the Gulf Today newspaper reported that cyber attacks have already cost the uh, Arab Gulf countries a billion dollars last year. I think they're going to cost more. Unfortunately, this is an expense we're going to have to live with. Um, we're going to either spend the money on defense or we're going to spend the money on recovery. I think it's better if we spend the money on defense. Because as nation states like Russia and China build these tools, like America builds these tools, they don't stay in the government labs. They end up leaking out. I listened to a very, very good talk a few years ago um, by Dr. Anderson, who tracked the uh, creation of a cyber attack tool and how it migrated out of the uh, government labs and eventually worked its way into common usage, first in criminal gangs and then just in public usage. And the same thing is happening to cyber attack tools against control systems. We're seeing the tools moving out of the government, out of Russian um, attack teams and going into just general criminal attack teams. So we're faced with, again, a very highly armed 
increasingly well-prepared adversary. For the case of the oil and gas industry, our adversaries are not going to be wanting to steal credit cards. This is not an attack on a, a store like Target that gets so much press in the US. These will be attacks that are designed to destroy something. There will be attacks that will be designed to uh, harm the economy of a country. And these attackers know it can be done. That's the bad news. That's unfortunately what they've learned from Stuxnet and Shamoon, that it's possible. And once they know it's possible, they're going to want to try it. Okay. So it's not if cyber attacks will occur against the Kuwaiti oil and chemical industry. It's when they'll occur. They may be occurring as we speak right now. Undoubtedly, people are out there probing and, and trying to get in. How aggressive are they? How far into your control systems? I don't know. But they will be attacking them, and they will be getting in deeper and deeper, and it's up to us to defend that. So my hope is that all of you here today, as you get to listen to some of the world-class speakers that are here today and tomorrow, people with years and years of experience, that you take that experience and learn from it, that you take that experience back to your refineries, to your plants, to your pipelines, to your um, well operations, to all the systems you have, and start to think about how you can use that information, how you can learn from the people that speak today, their mistakes, their wins, what's worked, what hasn't, and make a defense for your control systems, for your SCADA systems, that are going to be ready for the day that they will be attacked. Because again, they will be attacked and it's up to you to be, be protecting and defending them now for that day. Thank you very much. Hosted and organized by Equate Petrochemical Company in partnership with KPC.